everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we're going to be painting up another miniature from Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave. This one is Drachnar, another one from Rashrak's Despoilers. This is like, I don't I don't know, I've not played it, I don't know that much about the game, but it's the second massive Beastman miniature. Miniature? Miniature. Miniature. Maybe. Goat, goat dude. And yeah, pretty excited. A lot of people asked about continuing the series. So I'm not going to do all of the Beastmen, but the second big one's going to be good. And I thought in this video, instead of using contrast, I'll just use normal paints. And specifically, I'll use army painted paints, basically because I want to show that con contrast is great, but it's a tool. So you can do things with normal paints. And sometimes contrast doesn't suit them all. I don't think contrast will suit this guy much because, I, again, I'll be trying to stick to the reference art. And I just, you, I'm not going to be able to achieve his armor in the way that I'd want using contrast paint so yeah and then the other thing army paint paints i just sometimes want to show you know games workshop models the girl that's hand in hand with citadel and i just want to show you the, the they don't burst into flames if you use a different paint brand so yeah i'll be sticking to my army painter paints for this and seeing how we do first thing i would like to mention is i've used some green stuff to fill a few of the larger gaps on this miniature after doing the push push fit um, I've not completely glued it down or anything like it will still come off his base, which will be super useful when I'm trying to do his base and get underneath and things like that. So I've not glued him down yet. But I just noticed when I did, um, what's his name, Grashrak himself. Yeah, Grashrak, that's his name. Um, I mean, I don't know if you can see, but sort of there's a little tiny gap in his chest there. And it's not the end of the world. It's barely noticeable. Some, like It's quite nice in this view here. Well, sometimes it just leaves me with a sour taste in my mouth when I finish a model and then notice oh, I could have just filled that gap. So I've gone for some green stuff. There'll be a video on the channel on how to do that if you've never done that, and I'll leave a link to that as well. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just, just go and touch up the base, the priming that's been done. There's a few bits missing. And then, yeah, I've got to paint over this green stuff. So this is Wraith Bone by Citadel. Uh, it's their primer. And, yeah, I'll just touch that up to begin with. With the primer more or less touched up there, nice and neat again. Going to give me some base colour to work up from, or primed colour to work up from. I'm going to move on to his skin. A couple of reasons for this is, well, the reason for it is it's the inside of the model. Get this done first and everything else is going to be painted above it sort of thing. So I'm getting rid of the harder to reach bit. And then the other thing to mention is I'm not going as close to the artwork as possible. I'm going with what I did grash rack himself in and it's this sort of dead skin tone and colour here. So I would like them to semi-match even if I'm not painting them in exactly the same way. So for this I'm going to be using Army Painters Zombie Skin actually this one is but I think it's pretty much the same as their Skeleton Bone but it's from the, the Zombie Side set and I'm just going to be applying this to all of the skin area that you can see and it's actually only marginally uh, more yellow, creamier, darker, however you want to describe it, than the primer that I put it on. So this is heavily watered down and because it's because I don't mind that primer actually sticking through in some of the highlighted areas. I'm quite happy if this doesn't cover it perfectly. And if some of the highlights, some of the raised parts stick through, it'll do my job for me later on when I come to highlighting. So I'll be moving around the miniature, finding all the skin bits. So it's his arms, his chest at the top here, his torso down here, his hands are both sticking through, and his legs. I'm not going to be too careful about the legs because I'm going to paint them darker towards the bottom, like I did with Grashrak himself. His face will need a little bit of work doing. That's about it. Back to the arms and things like that. So I'm going to paint those up. Don't forget his ears as well, a little bit of detail that might be missed. So once you've thrown a couple of minutes at the skin, you should find that base coat done. A couple of things to mention while I was doing it is this guy's wearing fingerless gloves. He's very, very, very 80s. So that's actually the only bit of the hand I needed to do. And then there's also a couple of skulls and bones on the base, which I did in the same colour because it's a skeleton-y bone colour. It just happens that I made the skin that colour. So next we're going to move on. I'm going to do all the skin in one go, just get it done. Um, probably do that throughout the model, maybe just work on one colour at a time, show you the whole process. Uh, for, this, for the skin, we're going to uh, shade. We're not going to highlight. I'm going to shade this using Zombie Shader by the Army Painter. I'm going to take a smaller brush. This is my Redgrass Games Double Zero. And I think I'm going to attempt to be a little bit more precise, a bit more pinpoint with this than I often am with washers. And I'm going to apply this into the recesses that I want to, to darken down instead. I wouldn't blame you if you just want to apply it all over the skin and deal with it from there. But I think I'm going to go for just 
just out, just the recesses, but just slightly outside as well. I'm not going to mind too much if it blurs a little bit because that's just going to darken down the skin near the recesses and make it look a little bit more realistic Get a bit in this neck crevice here and round under his jaw. And that's just going to mean that I've got a little bit less highlighting to do later. I'm going to go for quite strong poppy highlights, sort of edge highlighting, and this is just going to make it that little bit easier to do. I perhaps should have painted his fur first just so I can see where I'm where I'm shading up to. But I think this is this is a nice colour, a light brown, grey, it's probably not actually that light, but a sort of grey brown wash, which I think looks quite similar to the skin I did on Grash Rack. So I'm just gonna go around getting out all of his ribs at every muscle fold. I don't know what you'd call it, every single muscle segment I'm gonna hide shade, sorry, I'm shading, I'm gonna gonna wash and really pop out the detail in those areas again before we go on to highlighting the most raised bits of all the muscle segments. I'm gonna get a uh, hand will be a nice bit to show you. For this I probably will just apply it generously across the lot and let it do its thing and seep into the recesses here and then I'll highlight up each fing finger individually later. The legs are going to be a bit more tricky because they're quite smooth but I'll try and get some in the in the folds and especially around where it meets any of these other colours. I'll, I'll be generous around those to really pop it out from anything else it's near. Once that zombie wash has dried, we're going to be using zombie skin again. That's the same colour we base coated it with. This time, well, I mean, it was watered down quite a lot before, but now a good 50% water, if not sort of 80% maybe even. It's a lot of water in this. It's super thin now. And we're just going to be highlighting back up the base coat around all the raised parts of these muscle segments, just cleaning it up anywhere that wash when we didn't want to, anywhere. It's just not a nice clean sort of line in the recess of the muscle segments. We're just gonna paint those back in. So it's just a matter of working our way around, around the little goat guy, painting back in that base color. And it's gonna take a few coats. It's heavily watered down, so don't expect it to be done in one when it's dried. Just build build it up over time and potentially as it's dry, well, I might show you some more coats anyway. We'll see how this one comes along after this is this coat's dried. But you might want to work towards the center of each muscle segment to like putting less on each time, building the highlight towards the middle of each part of the muscle. So I'll I'll work this coat in and we'll have a look how this looks once this one's done. One thing to mention is I will be avoiding doing any work on the legs at the moment as I'm going to really, really darken them down much like I did with Grashrak himself, where his hooves are much darker and we build it lighter up. So, well, we're going to build it darker downwards to get the look we want. But So I'm going to avoid the legs for now. So I've just about done the first highlight level, just really made all those muscle segments pop back out. And then I'm just gonna go around, same, same color, and I'm just gonna build it up, make them even brighter. But this time I'm not gonna go as close to any of the wash now, it's highlighted up roughly to, to where I wanted it to go. So now it's just a matter of popping out that color more and more in the bits I want it to be, and bringing that highlight closer to the center of each of these segments. Now. The reason it's going to work and it's going to blend so well is just the sheer amount of watering down of this paint I've done. So each layer I add is going to make it a little teeny tiny bit brighter because it's quite translucent anyway. So it's going to take loads and loads of coats to really bring out that original really bright skeleton bone colour. A couple of things to mention is don't forget his fingers. I had to go and paint in his fingers and he's got really, really prominent cheekbones. They were quite easy to miss and his ears as well. But yeah, all the muscle segments. So I'm going to do a second layer. For my final highlight on the skin, I'm just going to mix in a tiny bit of matte white, about 25%, still heavily watered down. So it's just made it a little bit brighter now. And now I'm just going to apply those finishing touches, a little bit on his ear, a little bit on his cheekbone. It's got two, so do the other side as as well. Uh, I will also do all of the knuckles on what parts of the fingers you can see. Just make those pop out a little bit more. Nice little bit of a finishing touch. Then potentially just some of the more prominent muscles. I'll just do a tiny little bit right in the center. Just make them stand out a little bit more like this 
pec here. Just get a little bit along the edge, go through his biceps a little bit in the middle. And then this, oh, that's his pec as well down this side. And you could do a little bit on some of his abs if you want. And it, once that's dry, it's going to be very, very subtle, but it's a nice little finishing touch. Moving on from his skin now, I'm going to start painting up the next sort of inner part. And that's going to be this goat fur he's got. He's got fur all over his person. For this, I'm going to be using Army Painter's Filthy Suit, a very light grey. Um, I'm going to use some wash to make this pop out a lot more later on. So for this, it's just a simple fact of going round, finding all of his fur. So he's got both legs, both hooves. He's got a little bit on his beard here, uh, a little bit on his cheekbones as well. His chest hair, there's a few little loose bits around, get those as well, a little bit on his belly and his tiny bit of armpit hair and then all of his back as well, so quite a lot of fur to paint. Before I shade the fur I just wanted to paint the horns, this is going to be using Necromancer Cloak. The reason I want to do this up front is because I'm going to be using the same wash for the fur and these really dark horns that I'm going to go for. As well as the horns with this Necromancer Cloak I'll be going for his straps across his chest, he's got two, two or three of them there, and I will also paint all of these rocks that are on the base, this one, two, three, four rocks to catch as well, so do them all in dark grey and then we'll come back and wash all the greys together. So that's all the greys done, uh, I added a little bit of the filthy suit on his handle there I missed before. And dark greys, yeah, basically everywhere I said this belt as well across his back. I'm going to carry on with the base coating now just because the amount of time it takes to wash this to dry. I just like to get a bunch of them done at the same time. I'm going to use a little splash of goblin skin here just to paint in this loincloth that he's got. It's quite a nice browny yellow, I like how it looks. So it's just very carefully on the front. It's about, oh, you've got a little tiny bit poking under here so that. That's about it on the front though, super carefully. Then you've got the top just poking out from the belt. That's a little bit tricky to reach, but just use the small brush. This is the double zero. So very carefully painting that between these belts. Uh, that's the buckle. And then yeah, just a little bit. That's a bit hard to reach. Might just finish that bit off camera when I can get it nice and close to my face. And then the bulk of it's just gonna be this bit here. So just gonna give a nice even light coat along here, darken that down with a wash later on. Just notice there's a skull around the back here and a couple of claws. A couple of claws? Is there just one? There's one. There might be, oh there's claws, claws here as well. So I'll paint that using that zombie skin, that skeleton bone sort of colour as well at some point. You'll just see that magically appear, I, I suspect. Darken it down with that zombie shade as well. Leather Brown's up next and we're going to be painting in these wraps, these straps, wraps, straps, wraps, not sure what they are. He's got a mixture on here so we're going to have to do some detail work afterwards to bring out these. He's got, yeah, it's definitely wraps around his wrist which I'm going to do in this Leather Brown but he's got these straps holding on his armour as well which I'll bring out later in a different colour but for now I'm just going to paint it all brown just to make it easy and make sure there's none of this primer showing through at any point later on rather paint them back on having known all the primers disappeared than leaving the gaps between them. But also while I'm here I'm going to paint this tree trunk that he stood on with this nice leather brown as well. I think I'm going to go for a darker brown for his hoof. So I think this lighter brown on the, the tree trunk will do nicely for some contrast between them. Just going to add that teeny tiny bit of oak brown on both of his hooves. It's really dark brown and then we'll be doing a dark wash later on, just get this super dark and then a really poppy highlight I think, just making it match that reference material. You can see why I didn't want to use the same brown here on the hooves as I did the trunk, it would just blur all together and be really really dull. So yeah, just oak brown, two hooves, simple as that. We're finally on to doing some shading now, some wash, and we're going to use Deep Tone, that's the black wash by Army Painter. And I'm just going to go around all the greys that we've painted so far and just use this Deep Tone quite generously. That will run into the recesses and really, really darken this down before we try and bring it back up to a grey, even brown in the reference 
artwork, but get it really, really dark. And I often use that necromancer cloak to do the to do the greys where really I kind of want black, but there's not much there's not much work you can do with black to make bits darker. And so I, I like to use necromancer cloak to give a dark grey, which you can then make almost black and highlight much more easily up from. So that's what I've done this for here. I'm also going to use black wash on all of this fur. So I'll go around and add it to the fur. I'll also add it to those belts that we painted in Necromancer Cloak. So it's just all the light greys, the dark greys. I'll get some on this strap we added to the axe handle and I'll get his gloves as well. The only bit I'll miss out are these rocks. They're dark enough for my, for my liking. We'll just edge highlight those up. So I'll just go and do that and then let it dry. As I mentioned, I've not glued the miniature to the base yet. So that's pretty sweet. I can put them to one side. And while all that wash is drying, Get some bonus washing done so this bit can dry independently of it. I'm going to use Army Painter's green tone here. I'm just going to use it very similar to the contrast and just to completely flood all of the rest of the base, all of the greenery that's on the base with the wash and that will just seep, well it'll stain the, stain the raised bits making them slightly green and seep into all of the recesses darkening that down into a nice dark green and it, that'll do, that'll do, that'll be a nice quick simple foliage solution for me, I think. So I'll go away and finish off doing this. For this tree trunk, it's kind of in the reference art. It's a bit, well, it's darkened down, but it's also a bit like mossy, a bit greeny. So I've just, I've never done this before, by the way. I don't know. We'll have to see how it looks together. But I've just mixed together the green tone and the dark tone. It's given us this grungy, really dark green to wash this with. And we'll see how that that looks afterwards but yeah just give it a try why not treat ourselves so it's probably about 80 percent green tone 20 percent dark tone and we'll just apply that generously to that it might take a couple of coats by the look of it because it's not quite as dark as i envisaged but maybe even a green dry brush afterwards to give it some moss we'll find out we'll find out but i'll let let all this dry now so the first layer dried and I've just added a second layer of wash to all the base because that wasn't quite the colour I was going for. While that's drying, we're going to start on the metals at last. And we're going to be using Army Painter's Rough Iron. Rough, rough! And I'm going to be painting on the first layer of all of the metals. So that's all of this chainmail stuff that's dangling down here. Any morgues, there's some under his arm up here. I'll also catch that. And then it's going to be the first coat on all of this these armoured pads he's got around his person. So he's got one on each leg, this one across his belly, his shoulder pad up here, uh, both of his wrist, no, one of his wrist guards, he's only got one on this side, and then both of his ankle guards, got to protect those hooves, haven't you? So it, yeah, it's, it's just going to be a nice base coat of this colour over all of the metals that you can find. So I'll, I'll do that. Disclaimer, not, not his axe. I'm going to do that in just silver and not these bits on the end of his horns actually and not the spike on his on his helmet but his helmet himself, himself this bit I'll do. I'll be back and show you anyway. That's that rough iron applied to all the metallics just giving you a, a second take in everywhere that got covered. And that's the first pass on these metallics. Next I'm going to use some bright blue. This is electric blue. It's crazy. Well, you'll see you see where I'm going by the end. I'm going to use this blue. It's going to be quite stark to begin with, but this is going to be it's fairly watered down, probably about 25% water. And I'm going to be going for an edge highlight to begin with. So everywhere around with all that rough iron we've just painted, just going to edge highlight with a really, really bright blue. And don't worry if it goes a bit on top of it, because we're also then going to sort of feather this a little bit, just make it a bit of a jaggedy edge just along the top. And this is just the first pass of highlighting it. And we're just going to get a nice base layer under the silvers we're going to be applied to make this shine up like metal. We've got some washers to do as well. We'll also want to highlight any of the sort of folds in the armour as well, because we'll be shining those up later on. And because it's quite thin, it is going to dry a lot lighter than we're seeing it being applied. So don't worry too much about that. But yeah, just I'm just going to go for this effect all the way around all those metallics we've just painted so take me a while 
just one more thing again. I say all of the places don't do it on the chainmail. It's just going to be all of his armor plates that I'm going to apply this to. His chainmail just wants to be silver, but I was using that rough iron as the as the shaded area. I'm just going to ha highlight that up from silver up to silver. I'm actually finding this kind of feathering technique to be working a lot better. Although I, it, we are going for some kind of edge highlighting, the actual edge we're going to do with silver later. So you almost want to put the brush flat to the surface and just tap, 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 lots of teeny tiny little strokes making this feathery effect. And it's the same down the center pieces as well as, as this arm. I'm sort of edge highlighting to begin with. And then just taking a minute just to spread that paint just a little bit with lots and lots of little taps. Just giving us some space. Don't worry about it being uniform. It can go larger in some places and smaller in others. It's just going to make it look realistic, like the arm has had some wear on all of these edges and it's going to have a nice shine. So feather, 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 feather. So once you've edge feather highlighted all the metals, you should have something like this. I actually quite like how it looks already. I'm almost tempted to not do my next step, but in the reference art, this these metallics just really are dulled down. So I'm going to use Army Painter's Deep Shader, a really, really dark brown wash, and I'm just going to mute all of those metallics as well as the blue highlights we've done. So this is going to make them way less blue. That's why we started with a super bright blue because I knew I was going to dull them down using this. But it's just primarily, it's just going to take the shine out of the rough iron, not completely. You'll still see some once this is dry. It'll have a much, much subtler metallic look. So it's just a case of going around all the metal, oh, well, all of those armored plate areas. That's how I should describe them instead of having to correct it each time and just applying a nice generous coat of this deep shader and then giving that time to dry. While you have got the deep shader out, I would recommend giving those leather browns on those wrist straps a bit of a wash as well. That's going to bring out the details and make them look infinitely better so catch those browns as well while we're waiting for that wash to dry we'll just start painting up some of the other metallics using machine gun metal we're going to be highlighting those armor plates using this to, as soon as it's dry so i thought may as well get the color out may as well start painting this by the time we've finished all of this that, that wash might be dry so we're going to be doing all of the axe head in this we're going to be doing this blade on his helmet this is the Army Painters Dark Silver, I don't know if I mentioned that. And then I'm also going to do his horns here. He's got one on each side. And then he's got a bunch of rings all over him. Well, not all over him. He's got one there, one up here, and one on his back. That's about it, I think. So I'll just go around him and do, do the base coat in Dark Silver for those. With all that machine gun metal highlighted up, I actually think we should wash it too. I was going to use a completely different wash, but I think just a deep wash, this dark brown wash again, is just going to make it look super tarnished. So I'm just going to apply it lightly all over the blade because that's kind of flat and it's just going to pull in places I don't want it to, but I also kind of want it to look tarnished. So I'm probably going to have to do some clean up towards the end on that, but yeah, just making it look a little bit older. We'll add some rust effects to these things as well later on. So do both sides of those of that axe. I'm going to put some on his horn as well. Hopefully that'll pull in the inside there. And then just to point out a couple of places. So I did all the rings. I'm not going to not going to tarnish them up. I'll do a little bit on this buckle you might have missed. So I'm just pointing that out really for you. But I'm also just doing it a little bit darker because I slipped a little bit there. So I'm covering some of the spill. That'll shade it down in the recess and we'll never know. Buckle on his back there as well. And that is it. There is a mountain of waiting for washers to dry in this video. And so apologies if I'm jumping around a bit, but I need something to do while I'm waiting for it to dry. I need to get to bed at some point. So here I'm using pale flesh just to dab on a little tongue for him. And I'm also going to try and very carefully do his lips, I guess you'd call them. Don't mind if it goes in the mouth a bit, because I'm going to wash that down in a second anyway. I'm going to go all the way around his lips, super carefully. I'll finish this off camera because I need to get this a lot closer to my face. Then while I'm in there, let's do him some dental work and add him in his teeth. This is basilisk brown, quite a yellow brown. And I'd probably go for something more like that zombie skin or skeleton bone 
if I hadn't done his skin skin in that colour. So if you do a different skin colour, you could choose a lighter yellow, although I don't think this will look bad. I think he'll have very yellowy goat teeth, which is awesome. Then the second reason for using this colour is I'm also going to do up his axe shaft in this, this colour and then tone it down later with a wash. And once again, we're going to scoop up some of that deep shader, mostly because it's still wet on my palette but it also will fill his mouth lovely, darkening that down very, very nicely. Try and get some on his teeth as well, because they are individually sculpted, so they'll pop out too. And then once his mouth's completely washed, try and get some on his lips just to darken it down a bit. It was a bit too bright, that should do. I'm also just gonna do this axe shaft over here. In the, in the, um, in the reference art, Notice this has got wood grain on it. I don't know if somehow we've over primed it by accident. Somebody let me know if theirs has got wood grain there. But that's really just a flat surface. There's some down here, so this will pop out some detail nicely. But yeah, there's nothing up there. But it is in the it is in the demonstration bit in the booklet. So yeah, darken that now. That'll do. Now his plate mail's finally dry. We can get back to highlighting that. And it's using machine gun metal, as I did mention. And once again, I'm just very lightly feathering it from, from the edge. And I will try and get along the edge as well as an edge highlight. But we'll use a very shiny silver. We'll use Army Paint's light silver to do that final step in a little bit. This is an incredibly small lip on the bottom of his armor. But basically, everywhere you can see the blue, you can go and recover most of it. I try and leave a little bit just above above where you do the silver, just because it'll give that blue tinge. It just looks very, very deep, very interesting, nice highlighting, and, and matches the reference art to some extent, as best as I can do anyway. But yeah, it's just the same as we did with that electric blue, except now we're going around and replacing a lot of it. That's why we did it so thick in the first place. And edge highlight along that plate. Just edge highlight along the back. But yeah, a little bit of feathering, a little bit of hints. Don't be afraid to just paint on the odd scratch as well if I can get a little tiny one a little dent and a little one next to it just to make it look realistic but you can paint that in various places I think it'll add a lot to the realism a couple of scratches here and there that sort of thing that's the feathering complete I'm liking it already we've just got the final shiniest highlight to do but while I was there I also edge highlighted the horns it's sort of got three edges and I went through all three of those with quite a generous edge highlights we'll do a little bit with the shiny silver and I also did this blade on his head left the axe completely as it is we'll only highlight that with the shiny silver just to give some contrast this this metal will be out again because I'm going to do some dry brushing on these chains so you might want to do that there but I'm just trying to do all the armor so we can be a little bit consistent with what's happening so next some shiny silver so we're going to use army painter shiny silver just to add some final little bits of flair I should have mentioned that I used that machine gun metal to paint roughly in these spikes that are all over his armor so that they're just like a dull silver. I wasn't super accurate. I just gave them a rough sort of really strong edge highlight over each four lines of the triangle. So this shiny one, I think we'll just put on the tips of all these bits of armor, maybe a little bit down the top edge, just a tiny bit on each. And then just the odd little edge highlight where you can see a really prominent edge that would be catching the light the most. So the very, very thin line along this top, top plate of armor because that's going to pop out lovely, lovely. And a little bit along this bottom bit just here. I'll put a little bit on this crack slash scratch here, make that stand out a bit more. And then this top edge of here, just that kind of thing. Just, just pick where you think it would catch the light slightly more. Just add a little bit. It'll give some depth to the highlighting, that little edge there. I think definitely all the spikes would be catching along the top. The tip, tip top point It's very, very subtle, that wasn't. Just a very, very subtle highlight. I'll also want to edge highlight all of these hoops he's got, just to add a bright silver to that. And again, super thin highlight this time along his horn, just here on each and we'll just brighten that up just ever so slightly. Then I'll come back and show you the axe work just in a bit more detail. So I'm pretty satisfied with the armor now. So onto the axe, 
and it's just going to be edge highlighting every single edge we can find with this bright silver so just find all the edges and very lightly take your brush sideways just catch along the edge of the bristles and just take your time it's going to take a while and just very lightly catch all of the edges you can find that's the inside probably one of the harder ones to do the top's going to be pretty straightforward so just steady your hands and just scrape the edge of the brush all the way along that edge getting all of that corner bringing some color to that and then same along this edge and we're going to go all the way around doing that to every single edge then after that we'll paint on some of these cracks probably brighten up this quite roughly because it's pretty war torn let's say something like just roughly highlighted up that and then we'll just add on some very little on the brush but we'll add on some scratches just across the face as though it's seen some damage willy-nilly just little little tiny nooks knocks thinner the better really I've done some thick ones but now we'll add some super fine ones just that kind of thing just make it look a mess like it's been in a war Something like that for the axe head is going to satisfy me. If you're not happy with it or you slip, mess up, whatever, either repaint it or just add some blood to it. Blood's going to, you know, cover up any mistakes, but also get, look a bit more gruesome if you're interested in that kind of thing. I'm going to leave the metal work for a little bit because I've got a bit more wash that's going to need to dry. I'm going to use crusted saw on this little bag that he's got on his side, this little pouch. And I'm just going to paint this in this maroony dark red. I just it's purely because I know I'm gonna add a wash to it and it's gonna need some time to dry. Now this brown's being done and the wash is all settled, I'm also gonna paint it in the straps that are holding his armor on over here. This is using Necromancer cloak again, he's got a couple of straps. And he'll have a couple up here to do as well. Just point out some others which I'll go and do. This one holding up the skull uh, and the claw on his back. We'll paint those in grey too. I think that's about it. While I'm waiting for that deep shade to dry on that pouch, I'm just going to add a little bit of light tone to this loincloth we painted ages ago just to give it some shading. I'm not going to highlight this back up. That will ding dang do. But yeah, we'll just add a little bit so it's got a bit of shading down there. And really it's just on the back where it's got a few holes and pieces like that. that the wash is going to make those details pop back out like here and that will that'll do that so with his legs we'll just use some more deep shade while we're waiting for everything else to dry and i'm going to have it getting it as like a gradient getting darker towards his ankle so for the first coat i'll just apply a light coat to all of it with it more pooling towards the bottom then once this is dry and i'll do all this off camera because i've done this many many times before for you guys but i'll add a second coat and i won't go all the way up his leg i'll go up three quarters of his leg and then I'll add a third coat and go up a half and then a fourth coat and it'll just be at the very bottom that's if it needs it sometimes it just pulls perfectly for you so I'll let those legs dry and then do some more coats while we're waiting for those washes to dry I'll use some of Omni Painter's dry rust effect paint I'm using a dry brush not because I want to dry brush this on so much as just very lightly stipple it on in some places so we'll get a little bit on this chain mail I'm going to highlight this up shortly anyway, but get the rust in there earlier on. So just bang in the center, really. Nice. Looking very old. I'm going to get some on his axe as well. This might be a bit hard to do with a dry brush, so by all means, use whatever brush you would like. But I just want some rust down the center of the head where it would be joined. Obviously, apply this anywhere else you would like. Be as generous or as ungenerous as you'd like, depending what what effect you want to get in the end. But I'll just add a little bit to all of the chain. It's time to highlight up that chain mail now. And if, like me, you're incredibly lucky and your machine gun metal has just been sat going really, really dry while you waited, well, while you painted, then you're going to get a really nice dry brush from that. And I'm just going to use machine gun metal here, just very lightly dry brush it over the chains just put some 
remnants of silver back in them. I don't want it to look super bright, so I'm only going to add a little bit. And while I have got my dry brush out, I'm just going to do a dry brush of the goblin skin again and just very, very lightly over his horns because I want them looking almost black, but where we're going to highlight it is going to be this sandy yellow, just like the reference art, and I think it looked really nice, so I just want to do exactly the same. Get it along that inner edge the most, I think. But yeah, just very, very, very lightly, very carefully here, especially given that you've painted the rest. Maybe if you've not, I've glued this, unfortunately. Had I not glued it, I would be pulling this off and highlighting it independently very safely, so I'd recommend that if you can. Woo, we're finally on to the final step of just painting the base, the rim of the base, I should say, matte black, and that's just gonna finish off this miniature and bring attention back to the actually important bit that we've painted above. I say finally, you might have noticed I haven't painted that, and if you don't know, that's because I myself am playing this warband, this Grashrax Despoilers, and Benson is playing and painting up the whatever the other guys, nobody cares about those guys, right? Those little elf puny guys. So I think it'd only be fair if I save this head for Benson to paint up. So he, he can paint one of his fallen brethren and really set him in the mood for what's gonna happen to him when we start playing this game. Hey guys, so Benson here. Uh, looks like it's time to paint one of my fallen brethren from Skaith's Huntsman. I think the less said about that, the better. No doubt some sort of sneaky, dishonorable kill probably probably asleep at the time so i'm going to be starting off painting the the hair and we're using prison jumpsuit by army painter same as we've done on uh, all the other models and we'll just give this a good base coat in here okay and here we have the hair all uh, painted up nicely so what we're going to do next is use some jumpsuit shader so prison jumpsuit base coat jumpsuit shader which is sort of a red wash and we're just going to put this on fairly carefully just to run into the cracks in the hair. Cracks in the hair? Run into the, I don't know, strands of hair I suppose. Strands of hair, that's better. Make them look a bit more 3D, make it stand out a bit better. Have to be uh, careful around the hand where Ben's painstakingly painted it in already. But not too worried about it near the head because obviously when we paint the uh, base coats on for the skin we can tidy up any little drips or whatever. Just make sure it doesn't pull too much. We don't want it too dark. We want it to add a bit of definition, but not pull too much. So I've got here one of Ben's old sort of throwaway brushes, as it were, and we've put some demonic yellow. That's another army painter one. I've got some of that. Put it on the end of the brush and then basically rubbed it all off on a tissue so there's very little left on the brush. And now we're just going to draw it across the uh, hair and It'll just catch, because there's not a lot of paint on the brush, it just catches on the raised edges. It just gives that sort of yellowy tint. So, as we can hopefully see on camera here, that hair looks pretty good now. It really pops, really stands out. So next we're going to move on to the face. Now, I've done this, it's the same as I'm doing my guys. It's a probably 60-40 maybe, 40% survivor skin, 60% brain map beige. Just mix them together, water it down a little bit, and then we're just going to apply this all over its face. Try not to get it on the hair. Potentially could have done this a bit paler than uh, my guys, because I imagine there's a lot less blood in him these days than there used to be. He'd probably be a bit paler, but I think it'll be alright. We've still got to highlight it, so we can always bring it up a little bit more. Oh, there's some nice grisly bits poking out of the base of his neck here where it's, you know, fallen off. I imagine it fell off. His head fell off. So as we can see here, all highlighted up. It's got good strong features. Probably was a good looking uh, good looking lad before he was, you know, dead. But um, let's do the eyes next. So the usual way I do these is with a little dot of black to create sort of the shadow behind it, then white in the middle and then a black pupil. It's a bit faffy but I find it produces reasonably good results. Have to be very careful on this. Very teeny tiny. A little dot of white in the middle. And this would be crushed skull. Hmm. Don't know they need a pupil, they look quite good with that actually. <laughs> put one in for completion's sake though. I suppose put it off as I may. I need to do the gory bit sticking out the bottom of his neck hole. <laughs> 
Uh, so we're using glistening blood because I imagine the blood is, blood is going to be fairly glistening around here. Doing this around the outside so you can sort of see his spine poking through a little bit, but we will put a little wash over that so it's smeared with blood also. It will just add a bit extra detail if it's uh, not all one tone. And then we can probably use some of that wash that we had before, the jumpsuit shader, I believe it was called. And there we have the finished head. So the mighty have fallen. One of Skate's band has been savagely taken down. But at least he's looking good. And that is that, guys. That is Drak now completely, complete. Nice. Love painting these beast men figures from Beast Grave. Really enjoying the models themselves. That's that's hopefully two decent examples for you, one using contrast and one using traditional paints. Let us know in the comments below which you prefer, which style of painting you like. I personally think there's a time and a place for everything, but I wanted to give you both examples on the channel so you can follow along with whichever one you want or whichever one you want to try out. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Basically rubbed it all off on a tissue.